Hi! In this video we're going to talk about some new concepts and one old concept. So these concepts are abbreviated div, grad, and curl. Grad we've actually seen before. So before we looked at if we had a function of say three variables. We looked at finding the gradient of f. That's the grad that we're talking about here. So these other two things, div and curl, are new, but they are related to grad and that they use this same symbol, this triangle symbol. And so when we first talked about the gradient vector, we talked about that symbol all by itself, that that del symbol, or sometimes that's called a nabla, is really defined to be a set of operators a derivative with respect to x of whatever it's applied to, a derivative with respect to y, a derivative with respect to z. So that's if we're working with something with that's a function of three variables. If we had more variables we might use subscripts or less variables we might just have x and y. So when we apply that to a scalar function f, if you look at that notation, the del del x, del del y, and del del z applied to f. If you sort of think about that similar to scalar multiplication, you can see that you can rewrite that as del f del x, del f del y, and del f del z. But what we're going to be doing here is using this del symbol, this vector of operators with vector valued functions f of x, y, z that gives vector outputs. So we would have these component functions n, n, and p. All right, so we're going to talk about these two new ideas and look at an example, a couple of examples actually. So for the first one that we're going to talk about, we call this the divergence of a vector field f, and we denote that as del dot f. And so if you think about writing that out, the del is this vector of operators, and then I'm going to dot that with this vector of functions, m, n, and p. And so when you do that dot product, just like when you do an ordinary dot product, it's a little different because it's not really multiplication, you're going to be taking the first component, and in this case applying it to the first component of the next vector. So we'll have del del x of m, or del m del x and then plus del del y of n or del n del y and then plus del del z of p or del p del z. All right so that is the divergence and we'll look at an example here in a little bit and the other one that we're going to talk about is the curl of a vector field f and well the divergence is a dot product and the curl is a cross product and that's pretty easy to remember which one's which because conveniently they start with the right letter. Okay so for the del cross f what we're going to end up with when we do a cross product of two vectors is another vector. So I'm going to write this one out using the matrix notation here and so when we do this cross product we're going to be really applying this del del y and del del z instead of multiplying. So in the i component here I will have del del y of p or del p del y minus del del z of n or del n del z. And then remember the minus in the cross product and then in the j component we'll have del del x of p minus del del z of m and then in the k component we'll have del del x of n minus del del y of m. All right, so I'm going to just write down an example here and we're going to calculate the curl and divergence of this vector field. All right, so for our divergence, when I do that and I take the derivative with respect to x of this first component, we will get 2y. That's all we get. And then when I take the derivative with respect to y of the second component, we will get minus 2x cosine y. And then when I take the derivative with respect to z of my third component, I will get plus x 
times sine of y. All right, so what I ended up with here is a function. And at this point, we're just calculating that. We're gonna talk a little bit later about what that answer means and what we're gonna use it for. We'll use it for several things in this chapter. Let's go ahead and calculate the curl vector. Okay, so when I do this in the i component, I'm gonna have the derivative with respect to y of this function p, that's in my lower right corner here, minus the derivative with respect to z of this function that's in the middle, my n function. We might notice that that n function doesn't actually involve z, so the derivative with respect to z of that will end up being zero. And then when we do the cross product, remember that there is that minus sign that's easy to forget, but important to remember on that middle component. And then on the j component, I'm gonna be taking the derivative with respect to x of this p function that I have in the lower right corner, minus the derivative with respect to z of my m function that I have in the lower left corner. And again, that function doesn't involve z, so that derivative will be zero. And then for the k component, I'm gonna be taking the derivative with respect to x of my n function in the middle there, minus the derivative with respect to y of my m function, my 2xy plus two cosine y. So two important things to notice when you do this last one here, when I do this partial derivative, I'll get my 2x minus 2 sine y, and then I need to subtract the partial derivative I get from that second one. So it's important that you put those parentheses in there so that you subtract that whole derivative. The other important thing to notice here, if you're gonna use your curl vector for anything else, you probably wanna clean that up. And you might notice that in this k component, I have some functions that cancel. That'll be important when we do uh, some of the applications of the curl vector is that if you get zero in some or all of the components of the curl vector, that can tell you something important about the problem that you're working on. So I wrote my answer there in the bracket notation. You could of course use the IJK notation if you prefer. So there are a few homework problems that actually just ask you to calculate the curl and divergence and really not do anything much more with them. I'm gonna just talk very briefly though about what these mean. It's a little easier to illustrate if we look at a two-dimensional vector field. So I've got a very simple two-dimensional vector field equation written here and I've graphed it on calcplot 3D and then I just took a screenshot of it so that we can look at a couple things here. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate my curl and divergence for this vector field. When you get a dot product, your answer is a scalar, in this case, scalar function, but a scalar. So derivative with respect to x, we will get y, and then the derivative with respect to y of zero, we will get zero, so we just have y here. For the curl vector, cross products are really only defined, remember, for vectors in three dimensions. So that's okay, I just need to put a zero for the k component of my vector, since my vector field here is only really in two dimensions. So I'll have x, y, zero, zero. And there's also something useful to notice about this. When you calculate a curl vector for a vector field that starts out only as a function of two variables, there are some important things to notice that'll be helpful to you as you go forward. Uh, first of all, if you start off with the vector field in two dimensions, this third component of your vector will always be zero. The other important thing to notice is that these other two functions and the first two components will not involve z. So you're gonna get a lot of partial derivatives that are zero here, and it's handy to know that you're gonna get zeros in some of these places, and that provides some shortcuts for you in doing your work. All right, so you'll be finding the derivative with respect to y of zero always if you start with a vector field in two dimensions, so that will be zero. And then the derivative with respect to z of something that does not involve z. So that will also always be zero. So in the i component, if you start with a two dimensional vector field, your curl vector will have zero in that i component. Similarly, in your j component, you're also gonna get zero because you'll be taking the derivative with respect to x of zero minus the derivative with respect to z of something that does not involve z. So that will always be zero too. And so really it's just the third component that you're gonna to have to think about. And so I will take the derivative with respect to x of whatever my n function is, minus the derivative with respect to y of my m function. So in this case, I will get zero minus x. Okay, so what these mean is they tell us something about the flow and the rotation of our vector field. 
the divergence of a vector field describes the net flow into or out of a point. And if your divergence is positive, that means you have net flow outward. If your divergence is negative, that means you have net flow inward. And if your divergence is zero, that means the flow in is equal to the flow out. So I'm gonna put here, describe net flow outward from a point because outward would indicate a positive. And if we have a net flow inward, that would create a negative divergence. So on this vector field here, what this says is that when I'm at a point where the Y coordinate is positive, so that would be any point up here in the first or second quadrant, I'm at any point up here in the first or second quadrant where the Y coordinate is positive, I have a positive divergence. And that's a little easier to see where the vectors are longer, but I made this vector field really simple so that it's kind of easy to see the flow. But if you think about a point right there in that first quadrant or also in the second quadrant, and you think about the vectors flowing into that point versus the vectors flowing away from that point, there is more flow out of that point than into that point. So the divergence at those points is positive. In the bottom half of the graph, so in quadrants three and four, where the Y coordinate at the point is negative, we'll have negative divergence. We've got more flow into the point than out of the point. And again, it's easier to see that where the vectors are a little bit longer but you've got negative divergence at those points down there because the net flow is not outward, it is into the point. The only points on this vector field where the net flow in equals the net flow out would be the points where the Y coordinate is zero. So those would be the points right on the X axis at all of those points if we zoomed in there, we should be able to see that the flow in and the flow out are the same. All right, the thing that curl describes, it describes something about the rotational properties of the vector field. And it's a little bit more complicated to describe, but in a two-dimensional vector field anyway, the direction of the curl vector tells you about the direction of rotation if you dropped an object into the vector field. So if I dropped, say, a piece of paper into the vector field, and I think about those vectors pushing on it. So my object, if I drop a piece of paper into maybe some current, where these vectors represent that current at that point, the object would go to my left, but it also would start to spin. I've got more push on the bottom of that piece of paper to the left than I do on the top. So that object would start to spin in this clockwise direction in that bottom half of that vector field. If I imagine dropping a piece of paper over here in say quadrant two, We've got a different sort of spin. That object would move off to the left as well, but I've got more push on the top than the bottom, and so that would cause it to rotate counterclockwise. So if you imagine dropping a leaf or a piece of paper in a current, and as you go watch it go down the river, maybe it also starts to spin as it goes around. And that's what the curl vector describes. The direction of the curl vector tells you about the axis of rotation of the object. So for this two-dimensional vector field, the direction of the curl vector is either gonna be straight up or straight down. And then the direction of that curl vector, also you can use a right-hand rule, where if you think about putting your thumb in the direction of the curl vector, the fingers of your right hand show you the direction of rotation. So for example, these points over here at say the point negative one, one, that's over here in quadrant two, the curl vector at negative one, one is zero, zero, one. So if I put my right hand so that my thumb is coming straight out of the screen toward me in the direction of zero, zero, one, my fingers of my right hand will be pointing in the direction of that rotation of that object. If you think about the curl vector at, say, a point in the first quadrant, say the point one, one, the curl vector at that point would be zero, zero, negative one. So you'd wanna put your right hand so that your thumb is pointing into the paper in the direction of the vector zero, zero, negative one, direction of the negative Z axis. And then the fingers of your right hand would tell you the direction that object would rotate. If you look at a graph of the vector field in Calc Plot 3D, you can choose from the drop down menu down here at the left, flow line solution curve, curl at point or divergence at point. I'm gonna choose curl. And you can actually just click 
anywhere on the vector field and you can see the direction of rotation. So I see that clockwise rotation right there, which would indicate that my curl vector's got to be pointing down. If I think about my right hand rule, my curl vector is pointing down. And you can see at the top of the screen here, it actually has a numerical calculation for that curl vector is negative 1k. And then I can click in other parts of the vector field and see that curl in different places. Down here in quadrant three, you'll notice that we have counterclockwise rotation everywhere, but when I've got larger numerical values for the size of that curl vector, if you look at the top of the screen right there, my curl vector is 0.3927k, and then if I look at my curl vector when I'm a little lower, I've got 1.059k, so the direction of rotation is the same, but notice that the velocity of the rotation is higher. So the magnitude of that curl vector is proportional to that velocity. You can also click on divergence at a point and see at that particular point is the net flow inward or outward. So at that point, uh, we've got divergence. It shows at the top of the screen is negative 0.981748. And you can look at those vectors and see that there's more flow into than out of that point. You can click on all kinds of different points on the vector field and see that net flow into and out of a point and numerical calculations for the divergence at those points. All right, try some homework where you're calculating these things.